Good afternoon and welcome to B-Sides Las Vegas. This is Breaking Ground and the talk is from email address to phone number, a new OSINT approach by Martin Vigo. So a couple of announcements before we get started. We'd like to say thank you to our sponsors, especially our Inner Circle sponsors, Critical Stack and Valamail. We also want to thank our stellar sponsors, Amazon, Microsoft, and Secure Code Warriors. We have a lot of sponsors and donors and volunteers who, without them, we could not do this. So big thank you to them. Um, another announcement, all the talks except for Underground, including this one, are being streamed to YouTube. So please make sure your phone is on silent. And if you have questions, raise your hand. I'll bring the microphone over. We want everyone to be able to hear you. So with that, let's get started. Thank you. Awesome. <clears throat> Thanks for, for joining me. I know it's lunchtime, so I really, really appreciate that. So in this talk today, I wanted to talk a little bit of a new approach for uh, doing OSINT, specifically if uh, we want to find out someone's phone number and the only thing that we have is actually his email address. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice. Yesterday was a long night. Uh, my name is Martin Vigo. Uh, I used to do product security. Now I'm doing more uh, red teaming. I also founded uh, Triscal Security. Most importantly, I'm from Galicia. Has everyone been in Galicia before? Nice. That's awesome. Sweet. Do you guys have Pulp of Ada? Good, 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 good. Uh, the others, you should go. And um, I really enjoy doing research. Uh, I do scuba diving, and my drink of choice is uh, gin tonic. And this is an Anstrad CPC 6128, which was my first machine, where I learned basic, and I, I really love this picture. It's the only one I have with the computer. Anyway, the point being is, <clears throat> the first thing I wanted to do is to talk a little bit about privacy, right? We're talking about email address and phone number. And this is kind of the way I look at it. If we will think like, what is the PII that I want to keep private? I kind of put a chart here, like an email address is usually what we are comfortable giving away, publishing on the internet, is the way that we communicate with strangers, so to speak, right? I will claim that the profile picture is still on fine, you know, it's something that we publish, a picture about us, unless you are really, really into privacy. The age, I get a, start to get a little uncomfortable if that publishes. Uh, some security questions relate to your birth year, things of that nature. And in my case, a phone number, uh, we usually don't give that away. I, you may disagree with this charge. This is my personal view of it. But definitely, in one extreme, we have the email, uh, the email address, right? It's something that we give away. The phone number, not so much, just to people that we know. And of course, on the other side of the spectrum, we have the social security number, which we don't give to absolutely anyone. It's anyway on the deep web somewhere already. So. But in terms of security, if we looked into email and address, this is also different, right? Think about if someone with malicious intent wants to target you and they have their email address. You could think like, you know, this is what I came up with. They can spam you or, or do phishing emails to try to convince you, <clears throat> you know, to click somewhere and, and drop an all day or whatever. They can try to target someone that you know by spoofing your email address because they know it, right? And try them to get to click on something malicious. But an email address, if we want to target someone, we can also use it to try to find password hashes. We can go to websites like uh, Have I Been Pound, see if my account got leaked with the passwords in clear text or that I can uh, crack it later. So that's something that someone could do if they have your email address. When it comes to phone numbers, some stuff is similar, right? I can get spam calls. I can get phishing attempts. We also have spoofing in phone numbers. So if someone has my phone number, they can try to pretend uh, to be me by calling someone else, my, my wife or so. But then we get into more interesting stuff. You may or may not be familiar with HLR registers, but that's basically a global database. Uh, that's how the phone system operates. But uh, most importantly, you can query it. You can put a phone number and get certain information about it. Nothing too crazy, but you can know if a phone number is being roaming, so you know if that person may be out of the country. You can know if that number is actually uh, active on a carrier or, is, or it has been disconnected. So there may be some accounts associated to that number that you may want to try to get that number registered for yourself. So we start to get into a little bit more concerning stuff. But then we have things like voicemail hacking. I gave a talk last year about voicemail hacking at DEF CON, and uh, all you need is a phone number, right? And you can target that. And the impact is very, very big, because you can compromise online accounts with that. And then we have fake cell towers. We have SS7 attacks. 
Uh, we have SIM swapping, very popular. We keep reading about people that get their Bitcoin wallets drained because someone uh, targeted them with that and bypassed 2FA. So these are the differences in terms of security we saw before in privacy as to the differences between leaking your email and leaking your phone number. And what I wanted to get at is that Leaking your email is not such a big deal, but if we have a way in which I can find your phone number, suddenly the threat surface increases quite a lot. So, but in terms of usability, on the right side, if we have a way in which we can find someone's phone number based on their email, that could be very useful for private investigators or OSINT professionals, right? Your target, you may have the email address that's not difficult to find, and you want to get his, his phone number because maybe, you know, if you work for the police or whatever, you can, with the carrier, maybe get their physical location and things of that nature. But for red teams as well, right? We may get a credentials, but our victim has 2FA on. If we will know the phone number, then we can play a little bit maybe with phishing attempts to try to find a temporary code or do some more um, sophisticated attacks. But like in everything, we also have the bad side. Being able for someone to find your phone, uh, phone number based on your email address is can be abused by stalkers and doxers, right? We, we read horrible stories of, of people just trying to dox others, and then like they order a million pizzas to their house, or, or things of that nature. And for spammers, it's bad too. We all got a phone call, and someone talking in Chinese, threatening us uh, with, a stack, uh, with taxes and things of that nature. At least I get it like every other day. So what are the classic methodologies that we know? You know, you can go to public records if you are into OSINT, uh, you know, like court uh, documents, things that are public that may have your personal information there. Google Docs, if you post it on, on a forum, your phone number, maybe because you were searching for something or wanted to buy something and your account is to your email, you may be able to find it. Uh, people search engines, the straightforward, right? The Spokeo or people find it or any of those. You put an email address, you get the phone number, data leaks, social engineering. So there are a number of techniques. So the purpose of this talk is just giving you another technique just there for professionals, for red teamers, because none of them are bulletproof. So you want to have a lot of tricks in your bag, and you want to have a, a wide range of tool sets. All right. So I mentioned before that uh, I did a, a voicemail hacking talk last year. And I, at B-Sides, actually, last year, I also did another talk that was focusing on uh, SMS. What I want to say is that I spent a lot of time resetting passwords in a lot of websites for doing that research. And I started to see a pattern, right? When I go to reset a password, it usually shows me a, a masked phone number uh, to which is going to send a text, right? That's how you usually reset passwords. You get a text, or you get a phone call, or you get an email. So, but I, what I realized is, OK, some websites show some, uh, the first ones, others show the second one. So I started to go over different websites and see a pattern. So specifically for eBay, for example, it's to anyone that goes and initiates your password research, just with your email, nothing else. Uh, will get the first three digits and the last two. For PayPal, it gets the last four. For Yahoo, it gets the first one, the last two. For LastPass, it gets the last four. And for Google, Twitter, and kind of like what is the common thing is that you get the last two. OK. The problem here is we have no standardization in how to mask PII. And I put this example here because I found it very interesting. For PayPal, if I go reset your password with your email, I get five digits of your phone number. If I have your password as well, I get challenged with 2FA, and it only shows me three. So PayPal, the same service, shows you five digits if you only have the email, and it shows you only three if you also have the password. So it masks more digits for an attacker that needs way more information about you. So it doesn't really make any sense, right? So, but the true power here comes of the combination, right? If, for example, who has here an eBay and a PayPal account? That's quite a lot of people, and the others are probably lying. So <laughs> with an email address, if I go reset your password, in those two, I will get seven out of 10 digits of your phone number. For eBay and LastPass, is the same case. Yahoo and LastPass is the first one and the last four. So you get the thing, right? If we start to combine accounts, we get even more digits just from your email address. So when I got here, I was like, OK, the max I got was seven out of your 10 digits for US numbers, right? So I started to focus on 
which numbers I don't know rather than how many I don't know. And uh, I appreciate this from a, a co-worker that told me about exchanges. I'm from Spain, so I didn't know much about uh, the phone numbering uh, system of the US. And he told me about the concept of exchanges. So I started to read a lot about that. So it turns out that an American number has, a, a Canadian number, from what I read, uh, has an area code that is the first three digits, the last four digits are the subscriber number, and the one in between is the exchange. Okay, so enter the North American Numbering Plan Administration. And I started to go down the rabbit hole and learn so much about the phone numbering plan, and this, this is really, really great. I, I read a lot of documentation. But basically, the North American Numbering Plan Administration, it's a... Um, it's an administration that uh, is in charge of uh, assigning phone numbers to different areas and basically taking care of how the phone numbers are assigned in the United States and Canada. The most interesting stuff is they have a public database of the area codes and its exchanges. What does it mean? That an area code does not necessarily have all the possible 1,000 exchanges assigned. Remember, we are missing only three digits, that's 1,000 possible numbers. It's actually not the case. For example, I live in San Francisco. I, have, I don't, I don't want to leak my phone number now. But uh, say I have a, a number that starts by 415, uh, it actually, there is only 784 exchanges for that area code. So I don't need to try any more 1,000 phone numbers, right, that I'm missing from harvesting from the services, because uh, about 200 of them are not valid, because they don't have an exchange assigned. For Tacoma, it's a especially interesting case. It only has five and, uh, 458 exchanges assigned to the 253 area code. That means that we got rid of over half the possible numbers that the, we had left, because we know it's the exchange digits and we know the area code, so it can only be to a 458 possible exchanges. And this is all public. So we reduced from 10 billion possible numbers from someone that you don't know any digit to only 458 just by using an email and public available data. But it's still quite some numbers, so I went deeper into the rabbit hole. Enter the National Pooling Administration. So, the way uh, the NAMPA assigns numbers is by using the area code, the exchange, and that is associ associated to a location, that's the area code, and to a carrier. So for example, say 415-201 is assigned to Sausalito for AT&T. 415-202 is assigned for Sausalito for Verizon. And so, like, and so on, right? So we only have the four last digits, that means that 415-201, it's 10,000 possible numbers. The subscriber number is four digits for AT&T. Uh, yeah, for AT&T. But Sausalito only has 7,000 um, residents. If all of them will have a phone number and all of them will have AT&T, which is not the case because there are also children and not everyone has AT&T, we still will be wasting 3,000 phone numbers. But that gets even worse because, again, we assign to different carriers the area code and exchange. So we possibly have, if there are four or five carriers in Sao Salito, we have 50,000 numbers assigned when there is only 7,000 residents. The FCC noticed this, and they published a document, and they suggested that the first digit of the subscriber number will be assigned as a block. So instead of assigning 415-201, to AT&T and 415202 to Verizon, it will assign 415201-1 to AT&T, 415201-2 to uh, Verizon, and so on. So now the blocks, instead of being 10,000, they are in the thousands. And so we are not wasting that many numbers. And of course, we can take advantage of this because the National Pooling Administration also publishes how the block, numbering, uh, the block numbers are assigned to the exchanges. So we can also take advantage of this. At the bottom, you see zoomed in what we are interested for. And for the 415272 area code plus exchange, we see that only the block number nine is actually assigned. The others are retained. That means that a carrier asks for it, but it's not in use. In other words, there is no phone number that is 415 
215 It can only be 415-2729 and random subscriber numbers. Makes sense, right? So let's say our victim, our target, is from Tacoma, OK? And they have an email and a PayPal account like all of you. I don't care how many raise their hand. You all guys have that. So eBay gives us the area code. Fantastic. PayPal gives us the subscriber number. Great. Now, thanks to Nampa, we know that there are only 458 uh, exchange assigned to the area code that eBay gave us. So now we have only 458 phone numbers possible. But because we have the subscriber number, we can go through the, those 458 exchange, see if they are pulled, which is the lingo for this, and see if they are pulled if they have the block number nine assigned. So we can further reduce the possible valid phone numbers. And we got it down to 445 numbers. Again, just by using your email and public available data from NAMPA and the National Pooling Administration. All right. <coughs> So as I mentioned, uh, that's quite significant. I will, I will argue that someone with, with intent and time could probably call here. You can automate that with services like Twilio and uh, you know, try to find out more of the victim if that's their, their, their phone number, right? You can maybe use the time song or something like that. But you can make 400 calls, arguably. Still, what we want to do is find a way, that was my, 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 my intent, find a way in which I could perfectly say, okay, this is the victim's phone number. So I started to think like the steps that I took till getting here, right? And the first thing that I did was I used your email number to go reset your password and obtain some digits because the, it was masked, right? Turns out that there are services that you can reset the password using a phone number and get a masked email back. So it's exactly the same attack vector in reverse. I have a list of 445 possible numbers. And now I can use that list, start to iterate over, over all those resetting passwords, get the masked email back, correlate it with the email that I have, and then find out what is your phone number. Here it's a little bit more clear. Amazon, for example, if I reset with a password with a phone number, it will give me the first letter of your username, the last one, and the entire domain. But the, the, the stars that it shows corresponds to the characters that have been masked. So I also have the length of the username. For Twitter, for example, it gives me the first two letters and only the first letter of the domain. But I can perfectly take advantage of this because I can correlate. If my victim is victimusa at martinvigo.com, it's very, very likely between those 445 that uh, I find out the phone number, right? That I doubt that there is going to be two or three that have exactly the same masking. And if they do, I don't care, because it's going to be two or three possible phone numbers. And it works great. So what is the attack vector? If I have a, uh, an email address, I go in to different websites and harvest phone number digits, initiating the password reset uh, for the, with the victim's email. And you can use services like Name Checker, and there are some services online that it will tell you from a username on an email address in which services that person is registered. Next thing is we use public available data and knowledge about the, the phone numbering plan of the country from, that you are targeting to reduce the phone numbers, right? The possible that there are. And then with the list of the possible valid phone numbers that we have left, we use services to go reset the password and, and correlate it to the original email that we have. And that's how we find out uh, that, person's, um, uh, that person's email. So of course, this is uh, a lot of manual work. So I created a tool that will do that automatically for you. All right. So. Uh, Oh, yeah, the features. So it goes and, and it harvests, uh, um, uh, sorry. it harvests um, uh, digits from using your email address, right? You put your email address, and it goes to eBay, to LastPass, and all that stuff, grabbing those digits. Then it helps you generate 
based on a mask, the possible valid phone numbers by querying NAMPA and the pooling administration. So you can give it 415-XXX-7923 or whatever, and, uh, and it will give you the list of the possible phone numbers. And then it can also go to those other services that support reset password with a phone number, and you can use proxies and stuff like that to bypass the CAPTCHA, and it will give you, uh, it will correlate the email and all that stuff that I explained and give you the possible phone number. Let's look at a demo. All right, so, uh, <coughs> so, oh, I can't pause it. All right, um, so we're gonna start, our victim is victimusa at martinvigo.com, right? So I'm gonna use the tool with the option um, scrape. And that's basically what it's gonna do. I just needed to provide an email, it goes to different services. In this case, it just goes to eBay and LastPass, uh, just to show it for uh, demo purposes. So it goes there and tries to get uh, digits from, uh, from those accounts. So I provide with the E option, the, the email of, of my target, and we will, it will go there, harvest those digits. So it's scraping eBay. So for example, I'm pausing it here. Uh, you get the first three digits and the last two, right? Pressing play now, and from last pass, I know that the, first, uh, the last four digits is 8826, but I also know that it's a US phone number because I realize that I will add a plus if it's a number that is not from the US. So I'm trying to find everything I can because this is about OSINT, right? You get tidbits of information, and that's how you do, how you do uh, uh, what, what you're intending to do. And uh, so in last part reports that the length of the phone number is this, and this is gonna be interesting for what I'm gonna explain later. Cool, so we have the first three and the last four digits. Awesome, so next, with the tool, what I'm gonna do is use the option generate, and this is gonna generate a dictionary of, val of possible valid phone numbers for the mask that I'm providing. So what I'm gonna do is provide that 415XXX8826, right? Because I'm, I got already seven out of the 10, and I'm missing the three corresponding to the exchange. So it's going, it's downloading the, the database, it's parsing it, and it gives me a, a number of valid phone numbers. So I reduced even further the possible phone numbers of the victim. And the last thing is brute forcing. For demo purposes, I'm just gonna mask it in a way that I'm just, uh, that I'm just missing one digit, because it, it's, if not, it will take a little longer. So uh, what it's gonna do is gonna use, I think in this case it was Amazon, in order to, as I explained, reset the password with that list of possible phone numbers, in this case only 10, because again, I'm just masking one of the digits for demo purposes. And uh, it will tell me, it will start to correlate and tell me, oh, the, possibly this is the phone number because the email and the masking of the email adds up. So you see there, I'm just putting one of the X's and uh, I make it verbose, so we get, uh, it will tell you, oh, this account doesn't exist, or CAPTCHA caught you, or whatever. And that's how we found, we just found there that as the masking that I show you, it matches, so that's the possible phone number. Awesome. So what about other countries? Here is where it gets very interesting, because I'm from Spain, and in Spain, phone numbers are nine digits long. They are not 10 digits long. The US is a very big country. So unfortunately, it gets way, way worse. Is there anyone from Estonia, San Salvador, or Iceland here? Or Finland from the Alang Island? No? Also lying. Probably there is someone. So one of the things I realized was, OK, for, you know, 10 digits is actually my key space, right, so to speak. So I need to find out uh, more about that. But for countries that have shorter, is it possible that it will be even easier? And that's the case. Services like eBay and LastPass do not adjust their masking based on the length of the phone number. Remember, eBay is leaking five digits. There are countries with seven digits phone number. <laughs> Those right there. So, it will, if you have an eBay and a LastPass account and you are from any of those countries, your entire phone is public to anyone that has your email. I, you see it here, like I, I bought a phone number from Estonia, it's 5881172, LastPass gives me the last four, eBay gives me the, la the first three. Pretty, pretty bad. So this is a list of uh, countries with their le uh, phone number by length. Imagine like countries with, oh, I only have two minutes, okay. Uh, there are countries with eight digits, that will be only 100 possible phone numbers, so it goes on and on. 
thanks. So uh, the, the, <laughs> the, tool, the, the tool that I provided, uh, it's, it's more a POC. I mean, ideally, I put it on GitHub a uh, uh, couple hours ago. So ideally, uh, the community starts to add support for more services and stuff like that. But the true power is the querying the, the NumPy and the pooling, right? Getting that dictionary of list. So I am working actually on an online services, a website. Google style that you will put a mask. It will allow you, it has multi-country support. I found other resources that, I'm, that are public, uh, that I know more about the phone number system of other countries. Most importantly, advanced filters. Say you know that the victim has AT&T. Now you can click that and reduce it even further. Say you know that the victim had the phone number for over two years. Then you are not going to count the block numbers that were assigned in the last two years, because you know that the, the phone number had to be older. Uh, you can add filters for the the carrier I mentioned already. Or if you say like, oh, I know he's from California, it would only take into account the area codes of California, things of that nature. And it has historic records too, because these websites are updating every month, so I want to keep historic records. So I'm working on this. Stay tuned on my Twitter, and I will publish. I just didn't have uh, the time to do it. Recommendations very quick for online services. My, my recommendation. Uh, OK, my recommendation is to use a customizable label instead of the, of the last digits. So uh, just say, like, when someone resets the password, I can set up a label, and it will say, I will send the text to work phone or whatever I set up. Don't, don't, don't show digits. And for you guys, just don't provide your phone number or use a VoIP service or something. Uh, responsible disclosure, uh, kudos to eBay. They reduced from, from uh, showing the first three of the area code just to one. It's not perfect, but it's much better. PayPal, for whatever reason, they are displaying five, and they say this is working as design. Yahoo is still working on, on the recent mitigations. And LastPass acted immediately and reduced it to only two. Uh, too long didn't read. That's like how I like to finish my talks. Attackers can use your email address to obtain phone number digits from online services due to a lack of a standardization in PII masking. Combined with publicly available information and an understanding of the country's phone number in plan, it is possible to recover the entire phone number. Thank you very much. <laughs> And I take any questions uh, that you may have. Have you looked at any edge cases where the uh, different accounts uh, ha are registered with different phone numbers? Sorry, I, I uh, Have you looked at any edge cases where different accounts are registered with different phone numbers? Uh, yes, I looked into that. Actually, I have to say that I put a, as an Easter egg a Hollywood style kind of brute forcing when it was scraping, and it will start like to go over that. But I realized that you may have different accounts, so it will. That's why I put it kind of more like a report, right? It will tell you LastPass found this and eBay found that, rather than assuming that the phone number is going to be the same and it starts to do the digits. So that is definitely possible that the phone number is different in accounts. Great talk, thanks. Thank you. Two observations that might help you take it to the next steps. Uh -huh. uh, there are already online websites that do a good job of this for India and Pakistan that you could leverage. Oh. And there are starting to be some for the US, or you can uh, subscribe to pay services like Spokio.com or Intellius.com, and for a few dollars a month, uh, you can either put in an email address or a phone number, and it'll search all kinds of public records and give you an entire profile of the person. Yeah, not as much fun as doing it yourself. Yeah, no, definitely. As I mentioned, that's why I put up the slides. This is not the only technique. I'm not discovering here. Right? It's just a new, a new trick to add to your set of tricks, right? Any other questions? Yeah. Um, uh, do you find that in the in the automation that I don't know who you are? But over here. Oh, oh sorry. Do you, do you find that in the automation that any of the sites are going to start throttling the number of requests uh, that you can issue over a period of time, or that accounts are being shut down? If you're, uh, I, I don't know that you you necessarily need to log in, but but uh, is that going to to reduce the effectiveness of the tool? That's a great question. Two things. One, I only showed services that you only require the email. There are some services, like for example the. Uh, I think it was TurboTax that asked you for the, email, uh, for the username, for example. So if you have additional intel, you can leverage more services. That's one thing. Second, uh, I started with eBay, and I could do without a proxy 500. Like, after one week, they probably discovered that I was doing something noisy. So now, after 10, it, it blocks. But with a proxy, you can bypass that. So it will, the interesting thing here, it will not lock the account, because think about it. I'm iterating over a, over a list of phone numbers. So I'm only resetting it once. 
try to reset the password with one phone number. So it's not that I'm trying to brute force anything. So because it's only trying once every phone number, it's not going to lock the account, right? Because that's just one attempt. But, but is it going to block your, your script because it's and that's the interesting thing. It can only do it based on my IP, right? It cannot lock the account. So that's why the proxies are useful, VPNs and stuff like that. Probably behavioral if you get a little bit more fancy, but those are things that you can possibly bypass. Your, your uh, talk was really great, man. Thank Give you. Give this guy Appreciate an applause, because it's a lot of work. Thank you. Appreciate it. All of the sites that he brought up, their back end is actually one shared data broker. It's called Axiom Corporation and also uh, called LiveRamp. Wow. So if you have an access, you, these guys sell every bit of yep. your information no matter if you try to hide or not. They mark you as hidden and you're trying to hide. So it's not public information, anything about you. Your name is your property. Yep. in the United States. I don't know about the rest of the world. No, 100%. And thank you for mentioning that, because this is mostly about privacy, not just security, right? So unfortunately, I had to fly over the recommendations, but I have that you use dedicated phone numbers only to the services that it's mandatory to provide it. Because again, it's, a, it's just like a username, your phone number, and it will be used to cross references among these data farming companies and stuff like that. I agree. All right. If not, I'm going to hang out around here, so please feel free. I love to talk about this. Thank you.